Well, back in December, Maryland's Department of the Environment released its plan for how the state should achieve its climate goals. Its request to the General Assembly was nearly $1 billion a year. Yeah, but the state legislative session now over. Not only was that funding goal not met, advocates say a key budget amendment could set the state back years. 11 News Investigates reporter Tolly Taylor joins us now live in the newsroom. Tolly, you spoke with the director of the Maryland Sierra Club. What do you have to say? Yeah, the nonprofit lobbies to pass environmental laws like the landmark Climate Solutions Now that became law here in Maryland in 2022. But the director says the General Assembly's recent budget amendment was written behind closed doors, weakens that 2022 landmark law, and undermines the public's trust in the legislative process. In December, the Maryland Department of the Environment published its long-awaited climate pollution reduction plan, advancing new policies that would help the state transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy in the years ahead. The request to Maryland's General Assembly for the new plan, a billion dollars per year. Despite the steep cost, here's what Maryland's Secretary of the Environment told 11 News Investigates in December. What I want people to know is, worry not, we're going to get it done. Did that happen this session? It did not happen this session. Josh Tolkien is the director of the Maryland Sierra Club, one of the country's largest environmental advocacy organizations. He says while the General Assembly took positive steps that will help the state's economy shift toward renewable energy, passing bills focused on housing, transportation, and solar energy, Tolkien says the legislature also stripped a key provision from Maryland's ambitious Climate Solutions Now Act from 2022 which required that large buildings across the state reduce their pollution and increase their energy efficiency, reducing costs for ratepayers. The budget amendment delayed the energy efficiency piece of this regulation. Did this happen openly or was this behind closed doors? The entire budget amendment happened behind closed doors. And Tolkien's not alone in his concern. 11 News Investigates obtained an email written by Governor Wes Moore's Chief Sustainability Officer Megan Conklin about the budget amendment. It starts, MDE is concerned with the impact of the budget amendment and goes on to say, this budget amendment would force MDE to withdraw the proposed regulations, remove the energy use intensity provisions, and repropose the regulation. It notes that elements of the 2022 law that were supposed to happen in the near future would be delayed until 2026. Conklin says this means this amendment potentially puts federal funding at risk to the tune of $195 million. It is disrespectful to, um, to reverse a provision after so many people have participated in what we were told were the official public processes. When asked about not meeting the $1 billion funding target on Tuesday, Senate President Bill Ferguson told WBAL Radio, Very clearly, the climate is changing. We have got to be leaders, but we have to do it in a thoughtful and balanced way. And I think that we're trying to do that with investing in solar and wind in ways that aren't going to break the bank. Tolkien and others say Maryland House Speaker Adrian Jones was a strong supporter of the amendment. But a statement from her chief of staff, Jeremy Baker, underscores that there's a fundamental disagreement about what the budget amendment does. Baker writes that Climate Solutions Now was carefully crafted and says that implementing it requires proper oversight, adding, the General Assembly's budget language is very narrow and simply ensures the regulations follow the letter and spirit of the law. It's our belief and intent that the vast majority of climate solutions now will continue as scheduled. Tolkien's message to Speaker Jones. We know that you are passionate about many of these issues, but we need to, this, this process hurt trust and we need to do something to repair it. Person for Governor Moore says he has not yet signed the budget into law, but says that he plans to in the near future. For 11 News Investigates, I'm Tolly Taylor.